Welcome to Smart Health Talk with your host, Elaine McFadden. Well, the reason I want to stay away from it completely is kind of the next thing I wanted to discuss with uh, Dr. Hansen. And, you know, I don't know if this is necessarily your expertise, but I think we do have um, some pretty strong studies out there that are showing that agriculture, we're looking at global warming, we're looking at all these different things happening to our planet, and agriculture actually has um, a lot of potential to help us counteract the effects of global warming by getting away from this industrial type of farming um, that's causing like some of the other problems that we mentioned earlier with the waterways and the algae blooms and all those kind of things, additional side effects, um, that agriculture has a lot of potential for helping us with global warming and at the same time we could like stop using all these pesticides and maybe have like some healthier food. Right, but that's actually the larger fight for uh, sustainable or I would say ecologically rational agriculture, and that has been going on for decades. Uh, Things are getting better in an incremental way. The U.S., of course, it lags behind. But I think the fact that, you know, three years ago we had the IAASTD, the International uh, assessment, the International Agricul- Agricultural Assessment for the Role of Science and Technology in a Development, and that was something similar to the International Panel on Climate Change, you know, came up with this global treaty on the way forward for climate change. Well, a similar thing was done for agriculture with this IAASTD, and what happened is at the end of this process, there were 400 scientists, countries from all over the world, just like the IPPC, all these experts got, uh, got together, and the report that they released, the U.S., and a lot of industry hated it, and they walked uh, away from it. Why? Because it said the answer for agriculture is not technology. It's not more things like genetic engineering or nanotechnology, which is actually moving in. Uh, it's these ecologically rational forms of agriculture. It's moving back to uh, some of these forms that are uh, happening, and we are starting to see um, evidence come out, these studies come out showing that organic and other systems uh, actually you can produce milk and meat and have less greenhouse gas emissions than uh, industrial agriculture. And actually there was just a uh, report out um, that they're making a big deal out of it, but I've known of it, it for quite a uh, while. And that's uh, actually in India, there are these very poor farmers in Bihar and elsewhere that have uh, produced the highest rice levels in the world, uh, higher than any that have been seen with modern uh, technology, higher than Erie has uh, come up with, and none of it's engineered, and none of it's using a lot of chemicals. It's this uh, sustainable rice intensification system, uh, and it's all pretty much or, or organic. So there are a lot of farmers organizations, peasant organizations all over the world who actually have been pointing out in the fora uh, where climate change is being talked about that agriculture is an important component of it, particularly uh, more traditional forms of agriculture that are more ecologically rational and uh, these... Um, organic agriculture and and uh, those things. So you have a whole set of people that are trying to fight to preserve their way of life, and now we have some of the science that is starting to show that, um, for example, that organic systems where crops are rotated are actually, they have much less greenhouse gas emissions than um, these more conventional systems. Be sure to visit our website at smarthealthtalk.com.